Hello traders, it is Wednesday evening, June. When I do these videos each week, I always start with a recap of the prior week's picks so that you can go back and take a look and see how we've performed. The performance has been stellar week after week after week. I'm going to show you some great trades that we got into this week, and then we're going to find some new trades, and we're going to do this using Option Stalker. Everything that you see in tonight's video is available through Option Stalker. The price is $399 per quarter. It includes real time data, so you do not need to have a special brokerage account. You do not need to purchase this data separately. Simply go to www.oneoption.com, spell it all out. You can try both the chat room and Option Stalker for a week. So without further ado, I'd like to get started on tonight's video. If you are watching the video on YouTube and you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. So we need to start with the market. I'm going to put a couple of overlays up. I'm going to put up a 200 day moving average. We're going to put up a 100 day moving average. You can see how the S&P 500 has been in a very steady decline. We can zoom out, take a look at a longer term picture. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of market volatility. Look at this rally that we've had so far this year. Huge rally from the December lows, but things are starting to get a little tired. You can see how we barely made a new all time high and the market has been rolling over ever since. And now it's starting to challenge these major moving averages. The black is the 100 day. The pink is the 200 day I'm going to return to normal view by clicking the magnifying glass. And here we can see that we dipped below the 200 day moving average earlier this week and we stayed below it. But now we've rallied. This was Tuesday's price action and we got above the 200 day moving average and actually closed above the 100 day moving average. Today we added to those gains. We had <clears throat> excuse me, dovish comments from Fed officials. We had a Fed official Tuesday that sparked this rally. Uh, Powell came out and said that they would adjust interest rates accordingly, and they removed the word patient from the speech, and the market rejoiced. It's addicted to low interest rates, but this comes at a price. The reason that the Fed is so cautious is because they're worried about global economic growth. And the IMF just lowered its projections this year from 2.9% to 2.6%. That's a pretty considerable reduction. The Fed's also worried that these tariff wars might add to the problem. Mind you, most of the major economies, England, Germany, France, Italy, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, all of them had manufacturing PMIs that were in contraction territory, and they were all just reported this week. China, the second largest economy in the world, narrowly escaped that distinction with a 50.2 reading. So what I'm trying to get at is we're going to be focusing on bullish picks. Why? Well, we have this downtrend line here that's been broken to the upside. That's bullish. We're above the major moving averages. That's also bullish. Now, in the previous video, we used this 280 level right here. This is horizontal support. It's also the 100 day moving average. So we're going to lean on that level. The longs that we take this week are going to be predicated on the SPY closing above that 280. 80 level. If it does not, we're going to shift to bearish gear. I personally believe this is simply a short covering bounce. This is very temporary. We need to let this momentum play out. And once this bounce starts to roll over and stall, we'll have a nice shorting opportunity. But we're not going to do it before it takes out this 100 day moving average. We would add or take a position here and add below the 200 day moving average. That's how I plan on playing it. Will it happen in the next week? I don't know. This is where we did the recording last week. 
This was last Wednesday night's price action, and we were going to be short if the SPY was below 280, which it was. So we took short positions, but you had to take profits. So let's take a look. And I also mentioned two bullish stocks that did really well. They were on our previous list. So let's take a look. That's how we start each one of these sessions off. I'm going to click Lists. I'm going to go down to May 29th. And we'll go through the list. Apple was a short that we wanted to take. <clears throat> There's the close Wednesday. We were below that 100-day moving average. Stocks sold off Friday really sold off Monday. So there were nice profits to be made. In fact, if you would have bought out of the money put options, they doubled in price and I'll show you that shortly. But once we get this spike up on Tuesday, and certainly once the stock and the market gets above 280, which was our caveat, we had to close these positions down and take profits on them. The market is moving so quickly that I wouldn't even consider taking a swing trade that's longer than a day or two in duration because the market's all over the place right now. Overnight risk is very high. This is a great day trading environment. So Apple worked out good, but you can see it's bounced and now it's above that 100 day moving average. If it comes back below the 100 day moving average, it'll be a good short. You can see how it's been in a very nice steady downtrend. I don't believe that Apple is just going to rebound and lead the market higher. There's a very good chance that China might retaliate against Apple because of the Huawei phone dispute. It's been blacklisted uh, by our government. So I think China may retaliate. Here you can see BB is a short and it did as we wanted to as the market was dropping. Turned out to be a nice little short. That was a stock play but it has bounced with the market. This is a bearish engulfing pattern, so I still like this stock short. I'm going to overlay the SPY. Week in and week out, you watch me do these videos, and week in and week out, we have winners. And you might think, wow, this is magical. It's not magical. There's a system. There's a rationale behind what we do. We trade relative strength and relative weakness. And that's what Option Stalker helps us find. So here you can see the stock jumped yesterday with the market. Today, it opened on its high of the day, closed on its low of the day. This is called a bearish engulfing pattern. And we are going to be looking for this pattern for a bearish pick today. Because I always like to have at least one bearish pick in my arsenal. So this would qualify. Look at the market staged this massive rally. This is the SPY, this gray line. Massive rally the last two days. What did the stock do? It could barely get off the deck. And today, it closed on its low when the market closed on its high. This is the type of weakness that we are looking for. And it gives us a tremendous edge. We have a huge cushion in the trade. So if we happen to get the market wrong, which we try not to, but if we happen to, a stock like this is going to be dragged higher by its hair. So being short this and not covering, you're actually still in pretty decent shape on the short. Now, I told all of you that SPY above 280 were covering any short positions and taking profits on it. ConAgra, that was another nice short. I'm going to take the overlay off. Toggle on, toggle off. You can see this was uh, Wednesday here, so it moved lower Friday and Monday, but then it bounced with the market. Now it actually looks like a pretty good long. If it can get above this 200-day moving average, you have this downward sloping trend line that's been breached. It looks pretty good. DIA was another short. So this is where the video came out. Had a nice opportunity to take a short position. These options doubled in price, but you had to cover. You had to take profits. Anything that I show you tonight, if you've got nice profits in the trade, please take them. You don't know what the market's going to do 
hour to hour. IBM, Wednesday, another nice short. MA was a long, but we would not have gotten long. I had mentioned to you that if the market happened to rebound, if we happened to bounce above those major moving averages, MA would be a stock that we'd want to continue to take a look at because it's been so strong relative to the market. So I'm going to put on our relative strength indicator so you can see that. Orange line above zero equals relative strength. So it did sell off pretty hard on Monday, but look, it's right back on that high after two days of trading. So if you're paying attention, you said there are two longs that we need to look at if the market bounces. You did really, really well the last two days. Oracle was a short. You can see how after the uh, video, it sold off. Boom, boom, below the 200-day moving average. You also had a chance to make a double on that one. Roku was the final long that I had mentioned taking if the market bounced. Look at this move. In the last two days, it's gone from $91 to $101. That is a $10 move. These were all of our picks last week. This is not cherry picking. I've gone through and I've showed you every single pick. They all did really well on the short side Friday and Monday. Tuesday, we get the bullish comments from the Fed and they came out in the morning. So, I mean, the market wasn't gangbusters off to the races on Tuesday. There was time when the comment came out to cover positions. So I'm going to put up a few charts because I thought I would just show you. Here's the DIA and these are the put options that you would have been able to buy and you can see here May 30 so you would have been able to buy those put options anywhere in here after the open. This would have been the first time you could have bought them after my video Wednesday evening. So you come in Thursday morning hey I really like that DIA short I'm gonna buy some puts you buy them here for let's say dollar ninety they went up to three seventy in the next two days nice this is Oracle Oracle didn't trade very actively at least these options didn't but they are liquid they they trade with penny bid ask spreads you could see you could have gotten in at forty cents this is Wednesday or uh, Thursday morning May 30th so the video is done overnight. Come in, could have bought those for forty cents. You could see they went up to a dollar twenty-five, dollar thirty. So you've got almost a two hundred percent winner in that one. And then finally, here's Apple. So this is May thirty. You come in Thursday morning on the open. You could have bought these for dollar seventy-five, dollar eighty, dollar ninety, somewhere in that range. And look, they went up to $5.75, even $4.50 on Monday. So lots of opportunities to make money. If you get a double on an option right now in this market, take it. Don't hold out. Don't wait for more. Market's up one day. It's down the next. Then it's down again. Then it's up. It's all over the place. You have got to take profits. Swing trades are very difficult to do that have a duration of more than a couple of days. So keep that in mind. Use those major moving averages on the S&P 500 that I've been telling you about. That 280 level is critical. As long as we're above it, I'm fine being long. And this bounce could run another two or three days. But once that bounce runs its course in two or three days, I'm expecting to see more weakness. And it could happen Monday or Tuesday before I do my next video. So let's arm ourselves let's go in and find some trades I'm going to keep it very very simple one of my favorite searches click scanner click bullish click pop bull lots of stocks to choose from we don't have to go drilling through this whole list I like to at least look at the top 10 so that I can give you a feel for what I look for and so we're gonna to go to CPB really nice horizontal breakout earnings 
stock opens on the low, closes on the high, so did the market. I, this is not a huge tech mover that's going to explode and never look back. You'll have an opportunity to buy this stock. I wouldn't chase it like that, but somewhere in the middle of this green candle around the $41 level, I would be interested. And I would use this as my stop, which is about $40 right there. So you want the low of that candle to hold and you want to be able to try and buy it somewhere in the middle of it. Around that uh, $41 would be good. This is not going to be on the list. Roku, fantastic. It's a long we've already looked at. I still like it. I love this beautiful trend line here. Love the relative strength. Love the horizontal breakout. Stock closes on its high. It's a volatile one, but I love the price action. I'm not going to add it to the list this week for one reason. It's already on the list. Shop. Love it. Stock barely pulls back with the market. Got a little bit of a downtrend line and boom, what a breakout today. I do like this one. You can see how it's been in a very strong uptrend. I don't think the options on it are real liquid though. So for that reason alone, we may have to take a pass on it. This stock still has some work to do. It's got to get through this 1440 level but this is a very powerful move got bullish bars closing on the high and it's a series of six consecutive bullish bars it's got some nice momentum this is a beautiful breakout you've got earnings right here so they like the earnings and now we've got a breakout through this high that's a nice stock COUP not real familiar with that company uh, stock is a little bit on the choppy side. You can see how it's done a whole lot of nothing for a while in here. Chop, 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 compress, compress, up and down. So it's not going to make the list for that reason. I like very nice, orderly, predictable price patterns. This is nice too, another choppy one, but getting through major horizontal resistance. This is what we look for. This is a nice breakout also. Lots of long tails in here which tell you the stock doesn't really move that well. So we're just going to keep looking. Click, click, click. I see something I like, I'll tell you about it. EXR, this is actually a nice little breakout here. Again, another one with long tails. Very nice, strong uptrend. Only looking for a couple longs and a couple shorts. Looking for that right stock. This would not be bad if it got through this horizontal resistance level, but I'm going to keep looking and I'm going to actually start to scan a little bit because I know stock, this is a great stock. That's a nice, this is nice. Wow. Okay, there's our first one, TTWO. So here's what I like about it. It's got this very strong uptrend. It got through the 200-day moving average. It's got good relative strength. <clears throat> let's put the SPY up so you can see look at this market down 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 what's the stock doing up 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 this is the kind of momentum we want to have working in our favor easy right it's easy if you have option stalker we go through and we search for these types of patterns so the fact that I'm just clicking through one of my searches here, Pop Bull, it's not a surprise that these stocks conform to exactly what I'm looking for. I love everything that this search does. And one of the things it looks for is that relative strength. This is nice. Very, very strong uptrend. You can see a breakout here. Stock opens on its low, finishes on its high. There's big hammer right here and then a breakout today with a close on the high very very good relative strength I like it AWK that's a utility stock I believe I'm just gonna keep clicking through and I know everyone likes to trade options I like to trade options 
And with the market falling right now, option implied volatilities are relatively high. So it's a tough environment to buy calls. If you're looking to trade options right now, you really should be an out-of-the-money bull put spread trader. Take advantage of those inflated premiums. Use probability. Get that on your side. And uh, I could show you how to construct a trade. I might as well. And I'll do that with at the end with uh, some of the picks that we have. I'll show you how to construct a bullish put spread. There, we're just trying to take advantage of time decay and a belief that the stock will at minimum hold its current level. This is really nice. Pepsi. Got one trading range in here, a breakout, kind of an overlapping trading range, but you have another breakout in the stock to a new high. Very good relative strength. So, certainly one I would consider because Pepsi doesn't make big moves. This could be our put credit spread candidate, plus it'll benefit from it's a defensive stock, meaning that during times of crisis, during times of uncertainty, everybody still buys their Cheetos and their Fritos and their Pepsi, so the stock is relatively immune to major market shocks. Walmart, nice breakout, very choppy stock though. So I'm going to keep going down here. Starbucks with a really nice breakout here. You can see it pulls back. And then the last two days break out to a new high. I'm not crazy about Starbucks because it just doesn't move that well when I'm in it. It's a very, very slow, slow kind of grinder. This is really, this is nice. Let me take a look at the stock and see what they do. Manufacture lightweight metals, aluminum, titanium, which seems like a very tough cyclical market. If you look at some of its uh, competitors, like X, some of the steel stocks, they are not behaving like this one. So it's definitely a leader. I like this. This is a nice compression in here, good relative strength, beautiful breakout, fairly cheap stock, so you can buy the stock. I like it. That's definitely going on the list. All right, we're almost done. And then we'll go back and we'll look at exactly what we like. Kimberly Clark, KMB. Very strong uptrend. Nice breakout through horizontal resistance. Good relative strength. Zoom out. Yeah. It's got good strength. I don't know that it's going to make the list, though. <clears throat> certainly a strong stock though TRV look at that powerful powerful trend pulls back a little bit with the market and boom right through that's nice all right getting too many picks right now I'm gonna have to weed through some of these That's a really strong pattern, but getting a little bit parabolic in here. So, got to worry about that. I always worry when you draw a line across the tops and you see the stock poking up through the upper end of that trend line, it tells me it's getting a little overextended. Cerner, really nice. Good compression in here. Breakout to a new high. I'm going to take a look at the longer term chart. Wow, real nice. Great. All right, that could easily make the list. Costco. This is really nice. All right, we got plenty to pick from. So before I pick the bullish candidates that we really want to focus on, let's see if we can find a bearish pick. I'm going to keep this relatively simple, and I'll also give you a index trade I'm fairly bearish once this bounce runs its course in like maybe the next week or two I think that the G20 meeting with G and Trump could kind of keep the trade talks from getting ugly but I don't think that there's going to be a trade deal with China before the 2020 elections I am 
one of the very, very, very few people who feel that way. But I just think there's uh, too much bad blood and China already feels they are the world leader. They're not going to kowtow to the United States and especially not to Trump. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so let's go in and do a real easy search. Option liquidity. Better than three with a high of 15. That'll give us a really nice range. And I'm only going to take a look for a stock that would have a bearish engulfing pattern today. Now, we know a stock that should show up on this list. There it is, BB, right there. I mentioned it to you earlier. So here's the premise, and here's why this is such an easy search for us to run today. I'm going to go back to a chart. I'm going to pull up the SPY. On a day when you have the market rallying, gangbusters, all day, closing on its high, you have a stock that actually reversed and closed on its low. So that's the type of relative weakness that we're looking for. If the S&P 500 happens to fall back below this moving average right here, then we've got a candidate that really will perform because it's already showing signs of strain. I think this last candle is duped for some reason right now. So uh, yes, in fact, it's showing June 6th. So it's already showing overnight data, but this is actually the last candle today. This is how we finish today. This is a bullish hammer. Closes in the upper 25% of its range and closes on the high of the day, I think we're going to have some follow through. But again, I don't know that we really get past this maybe 288 level for sure should represent resistance. And there are, there's a lot of negative news that's going to be hitting the wires over the course of the next month to two months, mainly global economic news. The slowdown is happening. So um, we're going to play it from the long side but we're going to be ready to short it just in case. So let me outline a bearish trade for you. If the SPY trades below 280, I would buy SPY puts with a 270. We'll go really low out of the money with a 270 strike price and a September expiration. I think that we're going to see some weakness and I think that it's going to start hitting sometime in the next two weeks or so. We've got earnings season in July coming up, so that might keep a little bit of a bid to it. But as soon as we start getting through earnings season, by August, September, I see the market struggling. So we want to have longer term options, and we only want to buy them if that 280 level is breached. The market keeps going up, 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 up. We don't want to be buying puts. We want to wait. And as the market moves up, we'll keep moving up our trigger to enter bearish trades. But we need to have that technical support before we even contemplate a short position. So there's one trade you can do, SPY. In fact, we did the DIA. Let me change that and we're going to stick with the DIA and we'll use the 200 day moving average. The Dow is much weaker than the SPY. You can see here that the DIA did not get above the 100 day moving average. It barely got above the 200 day moving average. So it still has some resistance here. QQQ has rebounded nicely and it's almost up to that 100 day moving average. So DIA is our choice and there we can use a 250 strike right in this area right here and we can go out to September on those options. But let's take a look and see what this search returns <clears throat> and I'll look at all the stocks. I'm just going to click through them. This is so bearish. There's your earnings. Big gap down after earnings before the open. Follow through very weak day today. There's your bearish engulfing pattern. 
So this bar engulfs this entire bar. And if you can catch a few other bars with it, even better, which it does. But this stock has fallen so hard. Look at the head, head and shoulders right here. Shoulder one, head, shoulder two, neckline. Goodbye. Still like that BB short? There's a nice engulfing pattern right there. Still got to get through support. Not bad. Trending lower. Very choppy. Don't like that. Has to take out that 100-day moving average, but if it can do it, I think it's got a clean path down to the 200-day. So, not bad. <clears throat> I would certainly consider it. Bearish and golf stock can't even get up to the 100-day moving average. This is BBY continuing to fill in this gap right here. So I like this as a short. I'm going to skip over all the energy stocks like British Petroleum. Energy has been very, very weak. The price of oil is falling. So um, yes, you can find some good shorts in that sector, but they are more driven by the price of oil than they are economic conditions. And yes, you could argue that while well, the price of oil is dependent on economic conditions as well, it is to a large degree. Commodity stocks have a mind of their own, so I tend to avoid them. I'm just going through and looking at what we might want to short. Looking for that right chart. This is not bad on GoPro. We were long up in here. Actually, I think we might have been long in here for this part of the run. And I hit, think it hit our uh, searches again off of this 200-day moving average or maybe after earnings. So it's had a good run, but if it breaks below this 200-day moving average, it'll probably retrace. This is nice. GPS. So here's what we like. Relative weakness, strong downtrend, earnings, stock drops, tries to rally with the market, no go. It'll probably test this low again. I like it. Hess, energy stock, very weak. IQ, Chinese tech company. Macy's. But down on the support, it's compressing down here. I don't see much downside. I need to see some downside potential for me to want to take a short position. And I'm not seeing it in a lot of these because they're down near major support. That's a big engulfing pattern right there. I think NLY could be an excellent short. Really tight compression here, but now that it's trending, really nice trend. Trended pretty well in there also. Rig is oil. Okay, this one's pretty interesting, and here's what I like about it. I like the fact that the stock has tried to rally. It's weak relative to the market. You can see how it's starting to drop off. If you connect the upper highs here, you'll see a downward sloping trend line. You've got horizontal support here that was broken today, but the stock managed to rally back probably because of the market, but it's still closed lower than the open. So this is not a bad bearish pick. Very weak. This is a bank. State Street, zoom out. It's right on the lows, though. This could be a good short below the 200-day moving average. It's a retailer. It's gotten above this downward trend line. It's probably going to challenge the high before it does anything. What I don't like is these gigantic tails. You can see how the stock is all over the place. So we want to avoid those. So we have two picks on the bearish side. We've got SF 
LY and GPS that I think would be good plays. And so now I'm going to remove this and I'm going to click list and I'm going to create a list and I'm going to call this June 5. I would come in here and I'm going to put in the longs that we're considering. And we got some weeding out to do there. I'm not going to put Starbucks in. I'm just not a fan of trading that stock. I'll put KMB in for now, but that's probably going to come out as well. Okay, there's our list. Let's save it. Let's go take a look at the stocks, and I can delete any that I don't like. ARNC, love it. So here's the game plan. You see how the top of that tail pretty much coincides with the open today? That's going to be our stop. I would suggest not buying the high here, but trying to buy a little bit of a pullback off of this high. It's not too far out of the gate, so it's not unreasonable to go in and buy the stock tomorrow, but give yourself a chance to try and buy it a little bit cheaper. Let the market open. We've had two really big rallies. And typically, the bid will be tested after that, meaning sellers are going to take profits and they're going to see how strong the buyers are. So if you wait during the first half an hour of the day, you're probably going to be able to buy it a little bit cheaper. But I like the stock right here. And that's your stop below that point. Your stop is also if the S&P 500, SPY, if it's below 280, you get out of your long stock positions. Just get out. Take profits. You'll probably have profits in most of these positions, even if you're on the wrong side of the market. That's how this is supposed to work. AWK, very, very strong. Really powerful trend. That's our stop is right there, which happens to coincide with the open today. Same situation. Try and buy the stock somewhere off of that high, maybe in the middle of that green bar tomorrow. Be bidding for it. It's got a really nice head of steam. Very, very good uh, momentum. Nice compression here. Nice breakout. You can buy the stock right away because it's barely through that resistance. And here's the advantage of using this strategy and buying these breakouts. We want that breakout to hold. If the breakout doesn't hold, then our stop is right here. We have hardly anything at risk. And if we have continuation and follow through in the underlying, the upside's unlimited. Then we just simply keep raising our stop on the position. So a little bit of tailwind from the market, and this stock should be going. So yeah, we're going to keep that on the list. GPS is one of our shorts. We have to wait for the SPY to be below 280. If it is, short the stock. And that's not coming up because I misspelled it. It's KMB. This is nice, uh, but I'm going to take it off. You can see I don't like this, where it goes through periods of inactivity and then kind of choppy and up and down. You've got some doji formations in here. They're not true dojis like these are, but I'm not a fan of this. So I'm going to delete that from our list. symbol. Pepsi I like and I told you I would help you construct a uh, bullish put spread. In this case I like this horizontal support level right in here around the 128.40 level. You can see that was the prior high. High, high, high. So multiple resistance equals support right now. 
Okay, it's stock trying to get through it, finally gets through that level, then it can get through this level. So I would key on that 128.40 level. Let's call it 128. So that would be the strike that you'd want to sell. And we can go in, we could take a look at the option pricing on that. We can go out to June 21 and we'll look at the 128 strike. You're not going to get a lot of premium for Pepsi, but the concept here would be to sell the 128 puts and let's say that you can get uh, 77 cents for that and you would buy the 127 puts so there's a one dollar spread between the strike prices that's your maximum risk is one dollar and you can probably buy these for 57 cents sell those for 77 so you've got a 20 cent credit you might ask yourself well how the heck does that make sense I can make 20 cents, but I risk 80 cents. You don't really risk a dollar. A dollar is the maximum that that spread can be worth, but you collected 20 cents for it. So a dollar minus 20 cents, 80 is your risk. And if you take 20 cents and divide it by your risk, 80 cents, it's a 25% return. Oh, 25% return, that's good. So what has to happen? The stock has to stay above 128 between now and expiration, which is in about two and a half weeks. And Pepsi doesn't move a whole lot. You can see that even with the market being down, this support level right here was able to hold even during the market drop that we had recently. Let's put the S&P up. Look at this big drop. Whoosh. What's the stock do? Holds its own certainly holds that 128 level so that's the idea the reason that the spread makes sense when you're collecting 20 cents but risking 80 it has to do with probability the probability of success is very high on this trade because the stock can stay flat the stock can move higher those are both good scenarios in fact the stocks at 131.40 it could drop more than three dollars and you still be okay as long as you're above that 128 strike price you're fine now the way that you manage that trade is if the stock closes below 128 you have to buy that spread back in it tells us we're wrong we need to move on take your lumps so that's how you construct bullish put spreads and that's a really good strategy right now given that option premiums are high and that the market might continue to grind higher for another few days here so you will get a little additional distance between you and the strike price SFLY we like this short it's got to come in below the support level right here so that is the 4690 level let's call it and we also need the SPY below 280. If that holds true, we take a short position and we'll use 49.20 as our stop. We'll also stop out if the SPY rallies back above 280. We're leaning on that level. That's our level. You can buy TRV tomorrow. You can see right here if you can get it in the middle of the bar, that's about where the breakout is. That'd be an excellent uh, entry point and you'll use that same level actually you got to give it a little room so use the opening of this green bar as your stop we want the stock to close above that open we don't want it retracing it should not retrace market down 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 stock holding its own it wants to go look at that relative strength really nice TTWO and use that 200 day moving average as the stop if the stock closes below it you can see how volatile it is long tails big moves intraday so we can let it move through the 200 day moving average on an intraday basis but we want it closing above the 200 day moving average love this strength love the relative strength like everything about this play so because it does move, don't rush in tomorrow morning and scoop it up right on the open. Wait a few minutes. See if the market's pulling back a little bit. Give yourself a chance to buy it 
as close to that 200 day moving average as you can. So I'd also mentioned buying S&P puts or excuse me DIA puts that would also come into play if the SPY closes below 280. So that close is critical. We want it closing below 280. We don't want it trading below 280 intraday on some tweet that comes out or some news or some Fed official said something the market didn't like and then the market comes right back. We want a close below 280. So in the last five minutes of trading, if you see that the SPY is closing below 280, you can start initiating the short positions. And at that time, you should be exiting your long positions as well. So the last 10 minutes of trading, you should be paying particular attention to that SPY 280 level. That's all I've got for this week, but we've got a lot of bullish stocks. We had one, two, three, four, five, six bullish stocks and two bearish stocks. I'm going to have a lot of stocks to go over next week. You're going to see how the vast majority of these stocks, they're all going to be trading the way that we expect them to. So I hope that you sign up for Option Stalker. If you haven't taken the trial, take the trial. I do these videos every week for my members, and they get them real time. So Option Stalker members are going to be watching this video tonight, and they're going to be taking advantage of these trades tomorrow morning. I hope to have you aboard. Thank you.